Welcome to Motoring Monday for September 21st, 2015. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're looking at some of the hottest cars that made their debut last week at the Frankfurt Auto Show. Some of these are the Infiniti Q30, the 2017 Jaguar F-Pace crossover, and Audi's got an answer to Tesla with their Model X. That would be the e-tron Quattro concept. Also, we're going to take a look at that thing going on with the EPA and Volkswagen with regard to the TDI engines. All that in our test drives. It's coming right up. After teasing us with a lot of different concept vehicles over the past few years, Infiniti finally revealed the production version of their Q30 Active Compact at the Frankfurt Auto Show last week. Infiniti's first entry into the fast-growing premium compact segment, the new Q30 five-door hatch shares its underlying platform architecture and engines with the Mercedes-Benz CLA and the GLA. With its bold and artistic styling, Infiniti's aiming the new Q30 at young buyers who want expressive looks and dynamic driving performance, but don't need a large luxury sedan to make their statement, and I think they did a good job in going from concept to production car without losing its flavor. The new Q30 will fill a void in the brand's lineup, particularly in the United States, where we haven't really had an entry-level model since the original G20, which was shared architecturally with the Nissan Sentra. Anyone remember that one? For the U.S. market, the Infiniti Q30 is expected to share the same 2.0-liter turbocharged gas engine found under the hood of the Mercedes-Benz CLA, which has 208 horsepower. This should give the Q30 enough power to be fun and the economy you'd expect in a compact car. Inside, the cabin is just as expressive as the exterior, with bold lines, curves, and high-quality materials all around. And techno-crazed buyers won't be disappointed either with a raft of both standard and optional toys to be had. The Infiniti Q30 goes on sale in selected markets a little bit later this year and the United States probably just after the first of the year in early 2016. Now, pricing hasn't yet been announced, but if I had to guess, we're probably going to be talking just under $30,000. Jaguar is reaching for new customers with their first ever luxury crossover SUV in the F-Pace, which made its debut last week at the Frankfurt Motor Show. Sporting Jaguar style from front to rear in a new shape we've never seen before from the brand, the all-new aluminum-bodied Jaguar F-Pace midsize crossover will go head-to-head -head with vehicles like the BMW X5 and the Mercedes-Benz GLE, just to name a few. It shows the brand is spreading its wings and realizing new goals since their divorce from Ford some years back, taking risks in design but also taking bold steps in new market segments as well. And under the hood, the Jaguar F-Pace will come with a variety of new hardware options, starting with a 2-liter turbo diesel 4-cylinder good for 180 horsepower. Gas V6s will include a pair of supercharged 3-liter mills with either 340 or 380 horsepower. Backing these up is a fully independent rear-wheel drive-based chassis made of lots of lightweight aluminum. The latest in dynamic controls and its overall light structure weight is likely to give better handling than you'd expect from a crossover this size. Sitting inside will be everything you expect from Jaguar as well in terms of the smell of fine leather hides and the sheen of top quality veneers, but there will also be enough digital revolution in every aspect to keep it not only competitive, but a class standout. These include touches like a virtual 12.3-inch high-definition instrument cluster with full-screen navigation display, a laser head-up display, and an available 10.2-inch touchscreen infotainment system. The new Jaguar F-Pace starts at about $41,000 for the diesel model and just over $42,000 for the V6s that will be arriving in U.S. showrooms next spring. Audi said not long ago they planned on taking on the Tesla Model X crossover head-to-head, -head, so it should come as no surprise the debut of their new e-tron Quattro concept. Boasting a 310-mile range and all-wheel drive to go along with its good looks, Audi says the sleek and angular all-electric concept crossover vehicle is destined for production early in 2018. And like the Tesla Model X, the e-tron Quattro has multiple drive motors, three to be exact. One drives the front wheels and two separate units drive each rear wheel with torque vectoring capability. Maximum power is around 500 horses and there's 590 pound-feet of torque. 
This Audi says can take the e-tron Quattro from 0 to 60 miles an hour in about 4.5 seconds with a top speed of 130 miles an hour. A large lithium ion battery pack sits under the floor of the passenger compartment which can charge fully in as little as 50 minutes with a DC fast charger and Audi's also looking into a wireless inductive charging solution as well. Like most electric powered vehicles, the battery can get some regenerative charging by siphoning off momentum when coasting or braking. Additionally, the e-tron Quattro has a solar roof panel which can trickle charge on sunny days. As a premium product and one with its sights on Tesla, the e-tron Quattro sports an adjustable automatically adaptive air suspension. With multiple drive modes, it can be adjusted to your taste or left to do its work on its own. When it comes to design and technology inside and out, the e-tron Quattro concept is a tour de force of the latest OLED lighting and human machine interface gadgetry known to man in our lifetime. While some things won't make it to production, we expect most will. Pricing for the new Audi e-tron Quattro hasn't yet been announced because the production vehicle hasn't been shown either, but if it's anything like the Model X crossover from Tesla which it'll compete, you can expect probably something in the six figure range for the most part. In our test drives this week, we drove something also at market, but the 2015 Lexus IS350 F Sport, much more affordable. Lexus competes head-to-head -head with the BMW 3 Series and the Mercedes-Benz C-Class with a strong punch in their now well-acclaimed IS sedans. And our IS350 F Sport is their high-performance variant which sports better tires, wheels, suspension, and lots of visuals to amp up the look. Handling, steering, and overall driving performance is at a near-perfect balance of being enough to make it fun and enjoyable, yet not so much to make it a handful. Translation? It's a sports sedan you can live with every day. Design has worn well since its introduction a few years ago, both inside and out. The interior remains a class leader in my opinion, not only in design and comfort, but in its stellar switchgear and infotainment controls. You can get our full review on the 2015 Lexus IS350 F Sport by clicking on the link down below in the information section or log on to our website at testdriven.tv. In a reality check segment, last week the EPA and the California Air Resources Board, or CARB, accused Volkswagen of using software to defeat the smog devices in their TDI engines. They allege Volkswagen employed smog equipment defeat devices in nearly 500,000 2-liter 4-cylinder TDI-equipped cars sold in North America since 2009 under both the Volkswagen and Audi brands. The complaint says the ECU has multiple software modes which can run the engine clean for testing but not clean enough to pass a test when driving normally. The EPA says this could allow the car to pollute up to 40 times more than allowed by the law. The investigation started back in 2014 with a discovered issue of higher than allowed levels of nitrogen oxide or NOx in the exhaust. Volkswagen worked with the EPA, revising the software and initiated a recall last year to address the issue. The EPA and CARB say, however, that independent testing done on real-world cars last spring revealed that the new software patch in fact did not fully address the higher NOx levels because it only ran clean enough to pass during certain types of smog testing. The Obama administration could pursue fines in the neighborhood of $38,000 per car and seek criminal prosecution in addition to forcing the recall of nearly 500,000 cars. The dollar figure could be in the tens of billions. Volkswagen will surely be coming up with a fix as soon as possible, no matter the cost, given their TDI engines are the cornerstone of their product strategy as well as their bottom line here in the United States. Diesel engines have accounted for up to 90% of sales on some models. In a statement on Sunday, Professor Dr. Martin Winterkorn, CEO of Volkswagen, said, The Board of Management of Volkswagen AG takes these findings very seriously. I personally am deeply sorry that we've broken the trust of our customers and the public. We will cooperate fully with the responsible agencies with transparency and urgency to clearly, openly, and completely establish all of the facts of this case. Volkswagen has ordered an external investigation of this matter. He added, we do not and will not tolerate violations of any kind of our internal rules or of the law. A stop order has been issued for the sale of all new 2015 and 2016 Volkswagen and Audi cars with the 2.0-liter TDI engines. At current, it's still legal to drive and resell used TDI-equipped cars, and the 3.0-liter V6 TDI is not part of this complaint. 
This is a very serious matter for Volkswagen here. After all, they've got a huge target on their back with this thing. First of all, it appears from what Mr. Winterkorn said that they do have some culpability in this matter. Now, whether it was a deliberate act to defy the law or kind of a bureaucratic snafu, and these things do happen in large corporations, we don't know yet and we won't know for a while. But either way, you can expect the Obama administration's EPA and CARB to come after this thing with fang and zeal. They don't like diesel engines to begin with, so when they're given a way to really sort of pry into it and tear it apart, you can expect they're gonna. Just saying. Now, it's time for a money shot where we take the hottest car from this week's auto news and we show it to you. At the Frankfurt Motor Show, Porsche unveiled their Mission E concept. It's not a diesel, but an all-electric sports car with over 600 horsepower, over 300 miles of range, and a charging time of 15 minutes. Oh, and it goes from 0 to 60 in under 3.5 seconds. And I'm sure the EPA and CARB will love it. Well, that's it for Motoring Monday. I've probably got myself in a little bit of hot water today with some of you, but hey, I've got opinions. What can I say? If you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the link right there and do exactly that. We test drive one, sometimes two cars every single week, and we have a new video almost every single day. You can also follow us on the Google, Twitter, and that Facebook by clicking on the link down below in the information section or up on our website if you happen to be there. That's testdriven.tv. I'm Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride.